So <laughs> why don't we just start with this really big sure. topic that is very dear to me. As a yoga teacher, there have always been questions about inversions. Inversions okay. are yoga positions where we invert the body. So we are mm -hmm. upside down. And um, it's a very, a very classical one. It's headstand, handstand, shoulder stand. So right. Gita, could you please tell us about the benefits of inversions? So inversions have two main benefits. One is the drainage of blood, the blood vessels which have stagnant blood, especially around the pelvic region and around the hips, and also these blood vessels which connect to the internal organs, these blood vessels get a very nice movement inside. And we call this as drainage of the stagnant blood. So scientifically, we can say that there is a proper venous drainage while inversion, which benefits the women. And it could benefit them by bringing fresh blood to the pelvis, of course. And also it can help in the balance of certain essential hormones, which are estrogen and progesterone mainly, actually benefiting the entire endocrine system. The second benefit is a natural replacement of organs. What happens is over time that our muscles start to shrink as we age. And also during pregnancy and after pregnancy, there could be a slight prolapse of uterus. There could be also slight displacement of certain organs. Scientifically, if I have to explain you that these organs might shift just by millimeter or centimeters, which we see in women after pregnancy, especially with uterus. And when this misplacement or displacement is more, we call it as uterus prolapse. So doing inversions could help in the replacement of organs over a period of time, it has to be practiced properly in a scientific way, in a therapeutic way, and also taking the do's and don'ts, the benefits and the limitations of the inversions. So I would highly recommend inversions to all the teenage girls and also to young children, why not? But mainly, to women during their menopause, it could help them a lot, and after pregnancy as well. So in short, these are the benefits. Thank you so much. That's really a great wrap up. Also, I really love how you make the connection to the scientific facts behind and then put it in easier words, because I think that's very important to understand the whole concept. And, can you tell me, because uh, we women, we face um, every month a, cyclic, mm -hmm. a cycle. And mm -hmm. uh, when we have our moon, when we are menstruating, are there any special um, information, any special uh, concerns when it comes to uh, inversions, doing inversions? Right. So let me take yoga physiology into consideration along with the scientific viewpoints as well, because yoga physiology is itself scientific. So if you know a few concepts about yoga physiology that you learned also at the ashram with me about the pancha pranas, that there are five types of prana. Prana means biological energy or biological force that keeps you alive. So there is movement within the body. There is life within the cellular bodies. So these pranas are five in number and they have their own functions. For example, the prana, which is here in the chest region, 
It helps in respiration. So the movement of air that goes up and then inhalation, the air that moves down. And the prana, which is samana prana, which is in the abdominal region, it helps in the digestion of food. So this prana works in circular motion. Okay. Similarly, we have the apana prana around the pelvic region. And this apana prana helps in downwards flow. Okay. Excretion of urine and feces. And along with that, also the release of the endometrium lining that happens during our menstruation, which usually people call it as the blood, okay? the discharge of the fluid, which is nothing but the lining of the uterus. So now the apana prana is working downwards, and this is the natural flow in order to expel out that lining. So the uterus goes through some contraction as well during this time. And along with the apana prana, the balance of the apana prana, this entire endometrium lining is being expelled within four to five days. Now, if we do inversions during that time, it can disrupt the natural biological energy of this particular prana, this apana prana, and it can cause some headache, migraine, maybe even more contractions. It can disrupt the natural working mechanism of the body, okay? So whenever there is a downward flow discharge downwards, Okay. It is not hygienically scientific. It's not scientific and it's not hygienic okay. to go upside down. Okay. So this is the first reason. The second reason is that a woman's body, if you look into the scientific aspect, you will also understand that during menstruation, a woman's body goes through oxidative stress at an atomic level. Okay. And during these days, three, these four or five days of oxidative stress, what is required is proper rest. And I would suggest to most of the women that they should take good care by slowing down, having you know, some very good fruits and vegetables, some extra supplements, some vitamin Cs, and sleeping a little bit more, taking extra naps, okay, and maybe some body massage and very gentle stretches around the pelvic region. But asanas like inversions, asanas which also put abdominal pressure, pressure on the abdomen or heavy back bends, all of this can increase the amount of oxidative stress in the body, including the inversions. Okay. So any strenuous movements during menstruation could you know, put a lot of burden, not only on the reproductive system, not only on the uterus, but on the entire physiology, on the entire biology and the psychology of the women as well. It could be at a subtle level, so I would advise women that the best thing during menstruation is to rest, relax, and avoid any strenuous movements like inversions, back bends, even forward bends should be avoided because it puts stress, means pressure on the uterus region. So I hope to some extent you get my point. If there is any other questions related to it, please feel free to ask. Thank you so much. I think it's very clear and also every woman who is menstruating, she feels the extra load on the system. And in my case, for example, I always feel really drained and it's like natural. When I'm connected to my body, I feel that I have to take extra care of myself and rest, relax, good food. Correct. It's so important. And I'm very thankful that you highlighted all the background information about this here. And 
another question that is really uh, a long time on my mind since I'm also working with ladies who want to become pregnant and who are pregnant and also after pregnancy with moms. Um, what does it mean to invert the body uh, like handstand, headstand, the very um, fancy poses uh, that uh, to do that when we are pregnant, when we have a baby in the belly or just are in the first period of our pregnancy. Correct. So whether you're in the first trimester or the second or the third trimester, you should avoid inversions completely during this period. Again, I will help you to understand it in a scientific way. First of all, there is um, the development of the fetus going on in the womb and also the apana prana is at its high during the three trimester and especially during labor, we see that the apana prana increases so that the labor takes place, the contractions take place. So this apana prana again works downwards. Okay. So that is the reason just a few days before pregnancy, if you have taken all the precautions, then naturally the baby would turn so that the head is towards the cervix. So it means that you have taken care of your body so that the apana prana could work in your favor. Okay, the downward flow of the energy, which is the apana prana. So when you do inversions during your first, second or third trimester, again, you're interfering with the natural law of the biological energy, the biological energy, which is helping the food, the nutrients, you know, everything which is moving towards the baby downwards. And the goal is that after a few months, the baby should be able to move downwards and there will be dilation of cervix and all that which what happens during labor, all that occurs because of the apana prana, the force coming from the apana prana. So when you keep on doing inversions during pregnancy, you're interfering with this natural movement of the biological energy. This is the first reason. The second reason is that you may feel comfortable doing inversions because sometimes it's very psychological, uh, especially women who are used to doing yoga asanas, inversions, they cannot give up that. And there is also that sense of ego that I am doing inversions. You want to achieve a powerful posture. You want to feel good. There is dopamine release as well. There's oxytocin release as well. So all this makes you feel very good when you do inversions. Okay. Or any other exercise, you even go for a walk, you will listen to music, you do something which is your favorite thing. You will always feel happy and relaxed. So now it is good maybe for you, but what about the baby? Okay, For the baby, it is a complete shock because the baby doesn't know that why there is a sudden movement. Because when you go upside down, you could also imagine the baby would also turn and move randomly okay, without any notice given to the baby, isn't it? It would be so quick and random. And it could put stress on the baby more than the mother. It could put some psychological, biological stress on the baby because of such a rapid, sudden movement of inversions. Okay, So that is the second reason that the fetus is not ready okay, for this rapid movement that comes without any notice. Yeah, you cannot so really be... say anything to the baby, no? Of course. So that is why the women are suggested don't do extreme twists, don't do inversions, don't do forward bends that would compress the fetus, don't lie down on your belly, on your abdominal region. Okay, This is for the fetus. 
and also for your own safety as well, because the third reason is that the umbilical cord, okay, which is there, you know, helping the nutrients, you know, through the placenta as well, you know, which you know, there is a very important vein that passes through the umbilical and the placenta, and then you know, the nutrients and everything is being delivered to the baby, then this umbilical cord could strangulate the baby. And it's not an isolated incident. There are several cases where the baby could move upside down, topple over. And as a result, there could be strangulation due to the umbilical cord going around the neck of the baby. And there could be a risk. I'm not saying that all the women could be at risk, but there are incidences and you could be at risk. First of all, your baby is at risk because the first thing is the baby will get strangulated first, deprived of oxygen. And you might not know that. You might not get any signals that it has occurred. But after a few minutes or maybe an hour, you would feel that suddenly the baby has stopped moving and there is a stone-like heavy feeling. So this indicates that there is something wrong. And this could happen because of the inversions. So these are the three main reasons. As I mentioned, the first is that you want to take care of the Aparna Prana doing its work properly, moving downwards. Okay, and especially towards the third trimester. So if you have taken care in the first and the second trimester, then in the third trimester, your Aparna Prana will help you in a natural pregnancy, or you can say a healthy labor, a healthy pregnancy, and a healthy delivery of the child. And the second, as I said, that there could be stress on the baby because of this random movement of inversion. Okay. You know it, but the, does the baby know? The baby doesn't know that, isn't it? Okay. Although there is protective fluid in the womb for the baby, but still we don't want to do rapid movements, jumping, twisting, turning in such a way that could stress the baby. And then the third reason, as I just said, is the strangulation. You want to avoid strangulation. So keeping all these points in mind, I advise the women who are pregnant to avoid inversions only during these months, nine months. Okay, once the baby is out and you start developing your muscles and the strength back, and then bit by bit, you can incorporate all the asanas step by step progressively. And even before conception, you can practice inversions. In fact, now coming to the benefits as well, back to the benefits is that it can help you in healthy conception, conceiving as well because of the drainage of the blood. So I would highly recommend women to do it before pregnancy, after pregnancy, but not during pregnancy mm -hmm. for the safety of your baby and for the safety of the self, of the mother. So I hope that this is clear. Thank you so much. It was very clear. And um, I have one question because I also advise my students to do inversions before when they want to conceive. So there is this period, I think it's like two weeks between you having your menstruation and the conception. Can there be a risk when, because you don't know it maybe that you already conceived, uh, and you will find out later when it's time to get your menstruation and you don't get it. Is there a risk uh, in this time of uh, insecurity to do any harm to the baby um, after conception with inversions? With inversions, of course, there could be risk. And apart from inversions, uh, something that could... Um, no, really put women in a, a risky place, in a risky position, is their lifestyle. So 
also your diet, what you're eating, drinking, how you're sleeping, your entire lifestyle, along with the movements of the body, the voluntary movements that you make, they should be controlled because the first trimester is quite a sensitive period and especially the first month of conception. So it is everything combined. Okay? Not only the asanas, the movements, but your lifestyle as well. So avoiding caffeine, avoiding alcohol, avoiding stress, okay? avoiding also bodily stress through rapid movements, all of this should be completely avoided. And rest, relaxation, uh, exercises which are slow, done with awareness, slow, gentle breathing, okay, all this. And along with that, as you know, we also have scriptures in uh, our Vedic literature. We have Garbhonish Upanishad, which talks about you know, the baby, the fetus, the development of the fetus in the womb of the mother. So even in these scriptures, you know, things are clearly mentioned that proper nutrition, rest, and also mantra chanting, uh, a sattvic, a clean, pure mind, clean, pure thoughts. Okay, all this could protect the mother and the baby together. Thank you so much. So when we do inversions, when we want to conceive, when is the point to stop? As soon as we find out that we are pregnant, we stop with inversions, correct? Right. Okay. Right. And first of all, anybody who is doing inversions, they should do it in a proper way with proper guidance because there is always risk associated of injuring the cervix region as well. Okay. And how to go into inversion, how to come out of inversion, how many minutes to stay, and also when to do inversions. You do inversions only when you are relaxed, when you feel strong enough, when you feel that you're not stressed, then you do inversions. But when you're stressed, when you're not relaxed, when your muscles are contracted, when your body is in an anxiety mode, Okay, you need to relax and do more gentle movements rather than inversions. Thank you so much. That was really a great talk. Very, very, um, I don't know how to say, mind opening to hear that again and also to feel how passionate you are talking about this topic and how important it is for you and in general for traditional yoga to do things safe and to the best for us like um, not because it looks good on the mat but because we want to feel good and do good for us and the baby and um, I would also like to know how can people work with you when uh, we see this very inspirational interview now and uh, now in times of COVID, everything has changed. How uh, can people who are interested work with you? Yes, I can mention that, but if there are any questions from the viewers right yeah. now. So let me, let me check. Know. So, Please drop any questions that you have concerning inversions for women, anything that is on your mind, maybe also any other question that is related to this topic, um, what yoga asans are good for women or uh, whatever you want to ask. Now you have the chance to ask a very, very experienced uh, and authentic Indian yoga master. So please drop your questions in the comments and let us answer, let us connect. That would be amazing. So just let me know. I will check my account where I stream it. Uh, at the moment, no questions there. Okay. Because I'm just so, seeing that it's not being streamed live. There is an error. Is it? Yes. Because I see that it's streamed live in Mystic Mamas and on my 
personal page, but you're right, a little bit time delayed. So okay, perfect. So if it is there, maybe from my side there is some error. Great. Oh, I see. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, maybe we can do it like this, that if there are any questions, uh, I hope you stay in the Mystic Mamas group. Maybe you can check out the comments or I can also answer them. Um, and if we need some extra expertise, I would be very happy if you drop in with your knowledge with your wisdom and share it with you uh, with us and are there any other things that you would like to mention about this topic anything else you want to share well we can then move if there are no questions we can move further with the next question you asked yes so how can people have... work with you <laughs> well i am doing my best to spread traditional yoga philosophy and through the 200 hours course which was running at the ashram the wise living yoga academy in thailand in chiang mai since past 10 years in thailand and also the same course which i conducted in several other countries and i traveled around the world giving various workshops as well and the focus is to share traditional yoga philosophy along with scientific techniques, asanas and the pranayamas while the trainees go through a yogic lifestyle routine and change their habits, moving towards more and more purity that we call it as sattvic lifestyle. So the initial Step is to get trained in this course in order to get a firm foundation in the yoga philosophy by studying a few scriptures like the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, of Bhagwan Patanjali, the Bhagavad Gita, and also getting the foundation, the introduction to the Indian philosophies as well, knowing some important Sanskrit vocabulary, words, knowing the pronunciation of it and also understanding the diet, the lifestyle, all that can support yoga. So it is a quite a comprehensive training, a traditional training um, where we teach authentic original yoga. You can call it as classical yoga as well. And I'm very fortunate to receive it from my teachers and this is my work. Now, since it is an online program, I'm open to work with people who are committed towards yoga as a lifestyle, following the pure sattvic diet without intoxicants, and who are also committed to spread knowledge and education and also help at a social level. So people who are interested to work together as a team with Wise Living Yoga Academy are welcome by first joining the 200 hours international yoga teacher training course, which is now starting from 11th of April. For any information, you can visit our website, which is www.wiselivingyoga.com or you may contact Daniela, which would be even better. If you know Daniela, then it would be the best thing that you contact Daniela. She could really help you, advise you, and give you the best guidance. And you can also feel free to visit our social media pages on Facebook and on Instagram as well. Or leave any questions over here, or you can drop any questions on our website. So in short, this is the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Gina. I'm going to share all the links from the Wise Living Yoga Academy and the teacher training on Facebook and on your of your web page here in the Mystic Mamas group and also on my personal page. And as you said, if anyone needs some more information, any advice, please don't hesitate. Feel free to connect with me. Of course, also you can drop any comments in the, uh, any questions in the comments. 
And yeah, I'm just very thankful that I had the opportunity to talk with you, Gina, to have this Thank live. Thank you so much. Thank you very much because it's really special that people, and I know you now, I want to say a little private. I know you since many years and it's always been a big goal of yours and I really felt that you were with me in Vienna to really help people so it's really traditional yoga practiced and lived uh, off the mat it's not only about the asans it's there is so much more uh, and you're always so committed to share it's really amazing how much work and how much love you put into this and everyone who is in the Wise Living Yoga Academy feels like a, a child of yours because you're so <laughs> caring and you have so many children all around the world. So it's really, really very special. And yeah, I want to thank you also for helping and supporting me all the time on the way. And yeah, I hope that you join our um further celebrations today on women's day um we are going to have a watch party at 3 p.m and a women's circle i don't know because you are in thailand uh, if it's possible for you so late but that would be great we try to raise the energy by honoring all the women we will sing something together and then make a little meditation a little meta meditation and also please uh pick up your welcome package i I made some treats, some little gifts and a brochure for this ritual. So I will also drop this link in the comments. Thank you very much, Thank Gina, you. again. One, Lovely. One, one Thank you, Daniela, for your work, for Thank your inspiring you. work. Um, very, very grateful for having you as a friend, as a student and keep going, keep shining keep spreading education and it is a pleasure to have you in my life as well. So equally grateful. And I hope that the celebration of Women's Day not only goes on for one day today, but every single day you inspire every single woman with your beautiful presence and your knowledge. So thank you thank very you much. So much. Thank you so much, Tina. Namaste. Have a beautiful rest of the day. And yeah, Mystic Mamas, stay tuned. This was the start of this our celebrations with a big bang and a very interesting interview. Watch the replay if you could not make it. Drop comments and yeah, share, like with uh, and share with your family and friends thank you so much have a good day and see you later bye bye gina thank you bye, -bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> so i'm going to try to stop this now <laughs>